Tiger's mom, she was like, has Lou ever tried to do Steve Harvey? Flew me out there and I had to do it on the spot in front of the Family Feud audience. What? The, the director and everybody looking at me, they say, hey man, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Like literally, I was like, oh, okay. Mind you, it's not a lot of us in the mm -hmm. crowd. I saw three aunties in the front. I, I got them. I said, you women gonna get me, go, we gonna do this thing. <laughs> As soon as I come off, he said, hey, bro, we about to sign you. Mm. Yeah, baby, I love you. Why the pizza man calling me at 1 a.m.? See, I know it's our anniversary. Just trying to surprise you. I know pizza your favorite thing. So I had a margarita on the way. That's all that is. That's all that is, baby. I don't, hey, there ain't no pizza, ain't no pizza. The only pizza I'm trying to hut is you. Appreciate you for tuning in in this episode of Funky Friday. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share this. And if you're feeling really funky, leave a comment. Enjoy the show. Yo, what's good? What's popping? What it is, what it ain't. What it could be, what it should be, what it would be. Here with another episode of Funky Friday. Cam Newton, the son, Mr. Boogie the All. And I promise, I promise, and I promise to give good content for the masses, but I even promise to keep it funky for your asses. Now, this person, you may have seen them grace your cellular device, your TV screen, content creator, former NFL player, Mr. Lou Young, my dog, partner. What's up, my guy? What's up with you? Look, you know what I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna say this because a lot of people don't know, <clears throat> like, you was really in the league, like. Yeah, you know, and I and I get it. I don't really talk about it. You let's know what I'm saying? Talk no, let's talk about it. Let's talk because you was, you was, you know, you saw me in the trenches. You witnessed. You saw me. I was me. a witness. You saw me. So for, for the folks who didn't know, me and Lou, we was on the same team. We had the same agent, too. You was yeah. on Tony Page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Um, and in 2015, that was in a very iconic year that we'll never forget. Well, you remember my, well, my rookie year, I got there 2014. Mm -hmm. Getting to Carolina was my fourth team that rookie year. Mm. You see what I'm saying? How many teams, how many teams and, and that, what teams were they? In that rookie year, undrafted out of Georgia Tech. Mm -hmm. Denver, thought it was going, didn't happen, right? They switched, I was about to sign the practice squad uh, for the season. Some things happen, you know how that, uh, you right. know, uh, wave of wire, all, all that stuff. That, I, I, that. I learned that as a rookie right there. I didn't know about all that. Right. So then I was on the first flight back to DC. Next week, go to uh, Baltimore for a month. Cut. They said they might bring me back. Went to Jacksonville to work out. They signed me there for a month. Play in London, do the London thing. Mm -hmm. Get back from London. Cut. And then uh, uh, Lee there had a workout in Dallas. Then it was y'all bye week. Yeah. <clears throat> and the season was a little shaky that, that year. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it was a bye week. They signed me. It, was, it felt like it was a combine. Yeah. It was like, 50, it was like 40, 50 dudes working out for one spot, mm -hmm. different positions or whatever. And then uh, they signed me. And that's, it. that's how, you know, that's how it happened. But you was one of the first people. He just pulled up on me in my locker. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you just, right after practice, like, hey, man, boom, 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 you know what I mean? And, like, that was, like, crucial for me because yeah. I was, you know, thinking from as a rookie going through all that. Yeah. You're just trying to find your ground. Correct. You know what I mean? Correct. So that was, that was big for me. I think a lot of people don't understand, too, especially going into the NFL, the process. You know what I'm saying? Now, everybody wants to get drafted. Mm -hmm. um, I was a... Uh, I seen the league in many different facets because my brother was also undrafted. He was on multiple teams, the Packers, the Baltimore Ravens, um, the Saints. And I just seen uh, the Jaguars too. The uneasy of like, damn, am I going to be here? You know what I'm saying? Don't know. That Grim Reaper yeah. is on your back. Literally, like, I would get in the locker room you know, as a rookie, really my, every day as an NFL player, 
I would sit in my locker, like, looking, you know, after is practice. Because is he coming? Because I experienced so many different things as a rookie. It was like, I, hey, man, as long as I know if I go to practice today, yeah. I'm going to get this check for this week. Correct. You know what I mean? So it was more so like survival. Yeah. But they don't talk about that side of the league because when they say, I'm in the league, everybody got the Benz, everybody got the yeah. Beamer, everybody got the uh, the Bentley, everybody balling, got the, you know, the walk up, blitz fit, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and everybody's swaggy. But the reality of it, like, it's the, the, the tier, it's like, it's tier one. And then it's a drop off. Quick. It's a drop off. Meaning, obviously, if you're a franchise player, you know you there. Mm -hmm. But then it's like, if I'm a practice squad player, bro, I done seen folks get released prior to the lead up to the game just to create some type of acquisition for the team. If, if we get an injury at the receiver position, boom, now we go from six including all the practice squads. Some some teams carry six, some t carry eight, depending on what it is. And if they get an injury, it's like, bro, we got to pull from our seven linebackers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so we got to yeah, cut yeah. a linebacker just to bring in another dude. But oftentimes, everybody just get enamored by, bro, I got to go to the league, I got to go to the league. But being on a team, no matter what role you play, Special teams is a position. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Defense obviously is a position. A nickelback, which you probably play out of 60 plays, you probably will play anywhere from about 30 to potentially 20, maybe 10 plays. Mm -hmm. You just got to be ready. Yeah. As, a, as a fourth or fifth receiver, like, bro, you may not get the ball all game until third and sixth with, with – Two minutes and 16 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Like, you got to do that. And make the play. And that, like, I didn't really know that prior to coming to the league. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, you, 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 all my life, I've, you know, I've been the guy. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, high recruit, everything like that. Uh, went through things at Georgia Tech, but still was able to get to my goal, right? Mm -hmm. So, getting to the league, like, they were like, hey, man, special teams is where you – Special teams. Mm. You feel me? So, like, that was a whole nother, I guess, a humbling myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, the league definitely, it played a big role in everything I'm doing now. You feel what I'm saying? So, because it just showed me this shit a business. Yeah. What has the league taught you in business? <clears throat> well, just, just from a standpoint of, like I said, my rookie year, right? I'm going on different teams. I'm... I spent a lot of time upstairs around the front offices. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Many different faces. You know what I mean? I seen how they walking from this off that office, pulling guys from here. I'm see, I done seen so many boards depth and chart. different off depth charts and stuff like that. So I see that it's a system. It ain't just you go out there and put this out of what y'all see on Sunday. That's what happened. Correct. It's a it's a, it's, a, it's a process. So it's taught me how to orchestrate my own team and what I'm doing now. Mm. You know what I mean? Putting things together, being behind the scenes, being on the camera, off camera, making sure things is right, editing my stuff and filming everything like that. So when y'all get that final product, they don't know what, what goes into it. Bro. They don't know what goes into it. Hey, man, look, I see a lot of times, <clears throat> like, especially in my, where I sit, controversial figure to some, you know, a very impactful talent, you know, and I always say it's so many determining factors in football that it's just not me. You feel me? I, 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 I also would say a quarterback is only as good as the field goal kicker. Mm. Ask Brady. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you think about that, a quarterback is only as good as his defense. A quarterback is also only as good as the offensive line. Yeah. A quarterback is also only good at as the receivers. So it's so many things that we need as individuals. Shoot, how many times DBs done got beat, but they got a sack? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, feel yeah, me? Yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. many things that kind of go into play. And it's just like now where I'm at, it's like, man, can't come back to the league. Do this, do that. I'm like, bro, it's I got to sit back and just uh, uh, analyze it from a from – a, 
way that I've never pretty much analyzed it before, bro. I'm very hands on with my businesses. I'm very hands on with my children that it has to be the right opportunity. So even with that, a lot of people don't necessarily know because you create such good content, mm -hmm. but you're also a businessman. Um, and I just appreciate, I salute you. I, I see where you came from, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you started, when you started doing this, shit, I was like, man, is that Lou? But see, what you ain't realize, like, especially like Carolina, like I, I use like, I, I was grateful for all those experiences getting cut because that rookie year, you know, as a rookie, you got a rookie show. Correct. Right? Correct. So every team I went to, I had to do a new rookie Another show. Another one. So I had to uh, impersonate coach, personate player, personate this, that, and the third, and just kill it. Mm -hmm. Right? And when I got to Carolina, I would sit back. Mostly, I was just trying to survive in Carolina. Yeah. Right? But I've always been that kid in class. Sit back. You know, I, ADHD, so I click out, and then I just start paying attention to mannerisms mm -hmm. and just laughing at stuff. So Coach Wilkes right. was my guy. I would just impersonate him and stuff like that. So the old head like, Lou, we gotta get, we need that. Yeah. You know, like but, uh, Harper, Roman Harper and everything like that. So he's like, Lou, get up there now. So doing that on the spot in front of them and everything like that, I always knew that's what I was going to do. Yeah. Even in college as a kid, that was just part of my thing. So, you know what I'm saying? It was like it, the transition wasn't really – that that hard for me, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So in the locker room, I would be cracking on people, but everything like that. That was the way I just was able to Cold. laugh through yeah. all yeah. The, the pain. The, you know, on my mind, like, I don't know if I'm gonna be here today. I don't know if I'm gonna be on this team next week. I don't know, but I'm gonna have some fun. Yeah, You feel what I'm saying? So now it's like, people really get to see uh, that I was like just coping with. Yeah. At it was time. it was it was toxic thoughts, so to speak. Man, you got to think. I'm walking in the lock, and I would come in the I would come in there early because you know practice squad guys mm -hmm. got to be there early you to work, work out. out. All right. This, they don't know, like practice squad guys got. It's like you opening and closing that 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 facility. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm coming in there, putting this work in and everything like that, but still not knowing. Right. Matter of fact, I remember one time Coach Rivera like pulled up on me, and. I'm walking, he's like, hey, kid. He said, hey, Luke, Luke. I said, I, I, I literally, I swear I, got, I almost swung on him. <laughs> I, I, I said, I, I know you ain't about to cut me right now. Ah. He said, he said, I, I'm sorry. I just want to say, kid, you're doing a great job. Bro, I was like, that's how mm -hmm. on edge, on edge like, I yeah. was every day. You feel mm -hmm. me? He was just coming to tell me, good job, bro. Right. But we love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And you saw, I would, I would put it, it in work. work. Put it in Man, work. I, uh, so even on that year, bro, mm. I'll, just to throw incentives to the, the players, right? I was like, bro, I knew what a practice squad player went through. You know what I'm saying? Because my brother my brother was that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I was like, bro, if y'all get an interception, mm -hmm. I give y'all a stack. Not just a stack. I get a whole defensive back core a stack. I need my receivers to have game reps. You know what I'm saying? Like that, yeah. that, those type of things, people don't necessarily know. And I don't give a fuck if they know it or not, because they see the 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 big energy, they see the I'm blessed, I'm fresh, they see the one pinky, one finger, one thumb. They see all that. But some way, shape, form, if another quarterback does it, oh, that's a great leader. Oh my God, look what he's doing. Right, right. But for me, I'm like, man, bro, I know what you're going through as a practice squad player, bro. And I know this 1500 that if you get an interception, you're helping the team. Bro, what? Well, you said that, I said, hey, hey, man, everybody <laughs> just get on your cues. Like, okay? swear to Somebody give me one or two of these. And that, like, but it was competition. Mm -hmm. it, we perfected, we helping each other. Correct. I know that, okay. I ain't playing on Sunday, right? I'm not dressing. I ain't get active till like late in the mm -hmm. year, but I'm not dressing. So how can I help the team, right? I know if I'm going at it, they looking at the film, this, that, and the third. You throwing some incentive yeah. with it because people don't know, like, yeah, you're in the league, but as a practice squad guy, you ain't making the same amount as that game check, mm -hmm. right? At the taxes, at yeah. that time, I think that the, you know it might be like 15 bands, right, for one game check. Mm -hmm. Practice squad guy, it would take me about three weeks 
to get to that, or maybe four right. to get to that 15, 16 range. Right. So you give me 1,500 plus on top of that? Yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that was like, people don't even realize, like, that stuff like that, like, where you would just look out for, from, I would say you looked out for everybody, but like for me, coming in there, you was always like open arms, like, hey, bro, come through. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm like, like, I'm practicing. Like, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, it's yeah. Cam Newton. You feel what I'm saying? Like, you feel yeah, me? Like, yeah. but you coming at me just like, hey, Lou. You know what I'm saying? Boom. And it was like, you made me feel so like welcome yeah. and that I belong because, like I said, people don't know about that roller coaster. Of course. You know what I'm saying? The guys like at your stature mm -hmm. or they don't really see that part of the side to, would, the, to would, the end of it. They career. would never see it. You, they don't really, you don't really, yeah. hey, you, come in, you coming in to the to your first year, it's red carpet. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm coming my first year, I'm on Frontline Airlines. Yeah. Uh, 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 what's it, uh, Spirit down there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Southwest. Like, what's the, uh, I Soul saw the plane. Spirit, what's Spirit's cousin? Frontier. I was on Frontier. Mm. You know, my boy, my dog Roby, he was on Delta. You feel what I'm saying? Comfort Plus. I'm so, you got to sit up like this. <laughs> <laughs> ain't no, ain't no recline. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This feel good. Yeah. Now you know what I'm saying. Mm. So it's just, bro. I, I, but I'm grateful for it all though. Yeah. Because now with the with the success and everything like that, those relationships that I built in the league. Right. Those are some of my biggest supporters. Right. You have me on, you, bro. You was a support me then when I was in the trench. Mm -hmm. Like you saw me daily, bro. I'm a man. Like no, no sideways. Just we have to normalize giving love, bro. Like I don't just do this one love. Just like I'm a lover. If I see something or someone that I know that I can help, bro, I'm doing it. And it's not for the credibility. It's been so many different times that I done reached out. And I know it's hard for everybody. And everybody has this whole stigma like, man, how the can can go be bougie? Da, da, da. I'm like, bro, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, bro. Like, I'm from the trenches. And if I can make it out, yeah. anybody can make it out. You yeah. feel me? So just to see where you came from and to see how you've kind of transitioned from it, and we're going to tap into it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, throughout this whole uh, segment, but let's go into a quick game real quick. You like games, right? So <laughs> the name of the game is Late Night Dub, all right? In this game, we swap roles. I will be the guest to your talk show, except I speak gibberish, right? And you will translate the interview for the audience. Have you ever seen Obama's anger translator? Uh, oh, Key, uh, and Key and Peele. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, man, this is what he's what he, what really, really saying. What really want to say. Okay. Right. So that's what this game is like. It's called Late Night Death. Okay. You ready? So here we have, look, the, um, my girl, what happened was it was just a complex type of thing. She really wasn't there, but help me out. See, basically... What you thought you saw, you ain't really see. I was helping somebody at the register. She just happened to be in, the, in my line of vision. I helped her out, I opened the door for her, called her Uber, that's all I did. I was just being a humble servant. No face, no case. What the, what the, a picture? Yeah, I was at the restaurant during that time but my hand, it, it, it just grimaced the, 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 the buns, but it really wasn't like that. Man. See, we was in a crowded environment. I got bumped by the waiter. I was on my way to the restroom. I just grazed her, but it was literally me just saying, good job, all right, good play. And that was that, and I'll see you on the next time. That's all it was. It was no friction there. It was just, way to play, boy. That's all it was. Whoa. Hold on, hold on. I ain't order all this fancy sauce. Yeah, I had wine, but I ain't know that wine. Baby, you, you, you got your... Look here. The, my man split that, split that thing down the middle. 
right, that's all we're going to do. I told you, appetizer, okay, one glass. They don't give all day refills on the wine. Split that down the middle. And then if you uh, violate me, she going to handle that as well. Yeah, that's my partner. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's six of y'all? Uh, bruh. Uh, hey, look here, bruh. We already ran through the bands, man. We ain't got no more bands. Uh, call my cousin. I'm a, I got to go inside. I got to set up the bottles and everything. I'll be back out later. Call my cousin. He going to come out and get y'all. Hey, there ain't no Wi-Fi on my phone. Hey, Tisha, tell Gerald to, to call me when he get to the door. And then they'll take care of y'all and everything like that. <laughs> yeah, baby, I love you. Hold on. Hey, you'll, see, you'll pass my phone real quick? Why the pizza man calling me at 1 a.m.? But see, what? See, now you got me. All right? I'm going to be real. I know it's our anniversary. Just trying to surprise you. I know pizza your favorite thing. So I had a margarita on the way. You know what I mean? And I know you like that extra Parmesan. You see what I'm saying? That was our first date. Don't you remember? That's all that is. That's all that is, baby. I don't fuck, ain't that no pizza, ain't no pizza. The only pizza I'm trying to hurt is you. Come on. My man. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but the but the the improv, bro. Yeah. Did you go to school? What you go to school for? Uh, went to business. Mm. Got my degree, uh, uh business uh, management at Georgia Tech. Graduated early. Mm. You feel me? Um, but even there, the media team, uh, they would have me do, you know. Stuff for the social and everything. Mm -hmm. This is like, you know, now social media was starting to kind of. Instagram was just not popping. Come in to play a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's, we got to, oh, we got to get this out, right? You know, get to the fans. And I loved it. You know what I mean? And just, uh, it was just like a little outlet. Right. And I remember like they would, they would play it on the, uh, on the big screen, like in the team room, in, in the jumbo, in, or in the team room. Oh, okay. With everybody there. I'm talking about the ministers, AD, yeah. everybody. And everybody be laughing. I'm like, Okay, and then my boys be like, hey, Lou, bro, you know, once this ball is done, bro, you might as well just. Mm. But that was as a seven, eight years old, you know, uh, little league teams, AAU teams, everything like that. I'm all, I was, you know, my, my dad, he was on the road a lot, so he would make sure I'm, I, I, you know, I'm with my coaches until right. they get me to the games and everything like that. And so all the kids be at, at you know, sleep over at mm -hmm. the basement. And I would be up late night making fun of somebody's mom at the game or my coach at the game or his dad and this, that, and the third and have us up all late night. Yeah. Coach, come, coach Butch, he come, man, Lou, come on, man. You know what I mean? Go, we got to be up early in the morning. We got this game, whatever. But as a seven, eight years old, I always was like, man, I'm, I'm, I want to be on TV. Yeah. I'm, I knew I was going to do something with ball, but I want to be on TV. So this is a real thing that we have to kind of – talk about because being an athlete, right, there's a lull where you know what them game checks look like. Mm -hmm. I don't give a damn if it was practice squad. Mm -hmm. I don't give a damn if you was the first pick of the draft. Them game checks was heavy, mm -hmm. luscious, mm -hmm. right? When you no longer was entertained by any NFL teams, mm -hmm. what was that transition of finding, as we know today, Lou Young? 2019 to 2020, going into the pandemic, right? So, uh, my last year, like my last, like five, the, the year five, I was rehabbing with the Cardinals, mm -hmm. right? Wilkes was out there. They was like, okay, let's see how he looking, whatever. And Tony was like, hey man, they got that AAF, that Alliance League, mm -hmm. was like. Basically, like with the XFL, right. it's like the, it's that the whole thing. G, now. It's not the G League. Basically, not like the, the G League. Yeah, to yeah. basketball, to, right. It's right. the developmental league. Right. Correct. So I'm like, okay, cool. I can show them, you know I mean? Get my film out, whatever, whatever. At that time, though, I was just, my mind was playing, you know I mean? Tricks. I was just like, bro, I hit all my boys. I was like, man, I think I'm going to just start filming stuff. You know what I mean? They was like, go ahead, dude. You've been saying it. I said, all right, cool. 
So I just started playing around, you know, me and one of my, my, my best friends uh, named Tiger. She, she, she always told me since college, Lou, you should get on the vine and all this. But I was like, ah, I don't know. Too cool for that. Too cool, right? And then I would get in trouble with that school and doing stuff on social media. So I was like, you know what? I ain't on it. You know what I mean? Y'all can't get me in trouble no more. Right. So everything that I was posting at that time was literally football stuff or my daughter. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, literally that year, you know what I'm saying? We, I'm figuring it out, but I step, kept uh, recording stuff and impersonating. I was like, okay, this, this is cool. People giving me little likes or whatever. So I just kept doing it. <clears throat> and then uh, we getting into the... Uh, to do the Alliance League with the Atlanta team. But at the same time, I was still making my videos. So like we had practice late at night, I'd be making videos all night. Same thing, same thing, same thing. That league ended in the middle of the season. We had we was practicing for a game. The kickers is like, hey bro, uh hey, we went bankrupt or something. Mm. I'm like, uh, like uh, we 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 game prepping. I'm I'm in here, you know. I'm, now I'm, I, now I'm in football. I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. hey man, hey, 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 check, check, two, two, all this. Then just to come in here and now is they done cut the lights off. Mm. I said, all right, cool. We in the locker room cleaning up. It's like a, it was like a, that scene Friday Night Lights where Booby came to the locker and you know he realized it was over it's with. It's over with. He cleaned it out and you know with the crutches. With the crutches. The bag and everything. And I was just in the locker room watching, dude. I was just like, man. So I just started doing that. And everybody was laughing. Some dudes was mad. And I was, some people was laughing. They're like, man, Lou, come on, man. This, this is serious. I said, hey, bro, it is what it is. Right. My boy B. Watts, we played a tech together. He said, Lou, what's your, I see you in Hollywood, Lou. I already know where you at. Yeah. That day, I made a video about like that situation. I was in the living room acting like Booby Miles. When he got in the car with his uncle, and I was like, shit, we should, I guess, <laughs> what we going to? I just want to play football. You know? You know? <laughs> and I, that's it. I had to snap book of bubbles and everything. And it went good. And I just, after that, we just kept rolling. Yeah. Start doing uh, Tiger's mom. She was like, has Lou ever tried to do Steve Harvey? And at that time, I'm like, I ain't really watched the 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 new Steve Harvey. Right. Like, I watched Hot Top Steve Harvey. Right. You Steve feel? Harvey show Steve, Steve Harvey. Har right. Not Family Feud. Steve right. Harvey. Bullethead Romeo. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's the that's who I was on. And I was like, and, but even then, I used to love like Steve Harvey's facial expressions. He would just his little mannerisms or whatever. So uh she was like, you know, the talk show, I was like, okay, okay, I watched it. And I noticed, you know, he say like, he say like, hey man, two plus two equal four, the crowd, mm. right? So I was like, all right, I could play with that a little bit. And it got great reviews. So I was like, damn. I like, to me, I was like, this ain't even my best work, but hey, whatever, we're gonna ride this out. Next thing you know, BD hit uh, uh, my boy. Um, he went to uh, school with them. He was uh, at Morehouse mm -hmm. with BD and his, uh, and uh, uh, Broderick. And, um, He's like, Lou, hey, man, you think uh, you want me to uh, send this to them? I was like, yeah, send it right now. Yesterday. Yeah, what you waiting on? He's like, so he sent it to them. I think that might have been at like a Kentucky Derby, you know, rich, rich, you know what I mean? Right. So he watching it at the Derby or something like that, they told me, called me. And uh, by that summer, going, uh, yeah, that summer, 2019, 2020, going to that summer, flew me out there and I had to do it on the spot in front of the Family Feud audience. What? Yeah, in front, like, so basically, I thought I was just coming out there to just do some little content. Hey, shake hands. This dude been making fun of me, or whatever, whatever. He said, he left at one point. I'm doing all this stuff, he left at one point. He saw his cigar in the back room. The the director and everybody looking at me, they say, hey man, go ahead. Like, literally, I was like, oh, okay. All right. Mind you, it's not a lot of us in the mm -hmm. crowd. But I saw three aunties. <laughs> I saw three aunties in the front. I, I got them. I said, you women going to get me, go, we going to do this thing. <laughs> and they was like, I just honed in on them. 
And by the end, I could hear everybody laughing. Yeah. I looked to my left, BD's over there, and he was like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> everybody was loving it. As soon as I come off, he said, hey, bro, we about to sign you. Mm. So now they manage me. Jessica, uh, you know what I'm saying? And uh, shout out to Chris- Chriselle, you know what I'm saying? She, uh, they believe in me. And even with that, she was still, Chriselle was still in my ear like, all right, you're not going to do this Steve Harvey thing forever. Mm-hmm. You know, the Schlieve Harvey and everything. She said, who is Lou Young? Like, what characters you got? I was like, damn. <laughs> she, she tried me like. But real question, though. Right? It's so, a business question. And that's where it comes back to the football piece. I done sat down in that chair, got cut, got told this and that, and, and, and basically like, what you going to do? Or this, that, and the third. So I was like, okay, cool. Because I ain't, I, I ain't about to get cut again. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? I know what that's like. So that's when I started making the coach slew and then the, uh, you know, the, the uncle and then, the, uh, you know what I mean, the Baltimore dude and Boston dude. That's to the point where I'm just making character. Now that I'm just, I'm out here just yeah. throwing things out now. But, you know what I mean, it's, it's a, I'm challenging myself and that, even that, I, I credit football because the them old heads will make me go in front of the in front of the team. And just to describe a an NFL team meeting, bro, you got folks from Atlanta. You may have two people from Atlanta, two people from Montana, a person from New York, six guys from uh, California, uh, Arizona. It's a smorgasbord of many different. Cultures, creeds, ethnicities, races, and everything alike. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Some people grew up with their parents. Some people didn't. Some mm-hmm. people grew up with just their mom. Some some people just grew up with their dad. Some folks didn't know their dad. So that is preparing you for everything in life. You know, when I talk about business now, I'm like, bro, my, my greatest gift was that I went through was a quarterback is the only position in sports that is the default leader. Mm. By, by default, you're the quarterback, you're the leader, you're the mm-hmm. captain. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not, you know, you think about a point guard, you think about basketball, it's like, uh, point guard, nah, he quiet. LeBron, LeBron don't play point guard. I mean, he has the skill set right, to right, play, right, right, but right, right. he doesn't play, but he's a four. You uh-huh. got, you may look at the Sixers and Joel and B, like, that's a center. Yeah, he's yeah, the yeah. leader. You right, know what I mean? Right, 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 right. Baseball, Derek Jeter, he wasn't the pitcher, he mm-hmm. was a shortstop. Yeah. So, Hockey, all these different things. It's like, but one sport, quarterback is the unanimous leader. So I was forced to tap into those guys who were not from my background, the offensive linemen, but also be cool with the defensive linemen, yeah. but have to tap in with the specialists, the kickers, the punters, the long snappers, but also have to migrate up to the uh, upper top tier office personnel to tap in with them. Because you QB1. Yeah. And think about all the... The many faces, as a, you was at Carolina, what, 10, 10 years? Mm-hmm. In 10 years, how many different faces, how many different receivers you done had to invite over just to get, get to know? The, the chemistry. Right. How many linemen yeah. you done had to, like, get to know? Right. Okay, let's, oh, damn, we back to this, right? So it's preparing us for when we go into these rooms and we got to, you know, we, 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 know how, we, got, we know how to put on any hat that they right. got. So, the, you know, yeah, it's, it's ups and downs. It's a little heartache, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? But we, we only human. But yeah. at the end of the day, I wouldn't change none of it for nothing. You should. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Because if I, you know, even my, even my dad, I have to, I have to, like, I have to, like, block him out sometimes. That's, that's my man right there. Right. Like, me and my dad, we like this. But I know it's things that he wish I would have did differently when it comes to football. Right. Or he look at a game. You know how you know how it is. Right. And <clears throat> I'd be like, he'd be like, man, man, Luke. I'd be like, all right, bro. I, but it ain't no disrespect. Right. But he's starting to understand. He's like, I did a good job. But you're evolving. Though. And he and I'm a, and I, he he his own man. Right. You see what I'm saying? I'm still he's still coaching me to this day. Mm-hmm. Ain't no disrespect to pops. But it's like. I'd be like, okay, I got you. But look here. This right here, but this is this five million views. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? I walk around, I go in the airport, I ain't got that helmet on no more. And people know who you people are. People know who I am. 
I never been able to touch people like this with that helmet on. Right. I, people call me or, 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 or DM me or message me from their they mom hospital bed. Like, man, we've been watching. It's, it's helping me through my, mm. me and my mom. This is, like, uh, dude, his son was going to do cancer or something. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that is, I ain't never been able to touch people like that. Right. So I know that's, that's God working through me yeah. with this gift. Like, real talk, even to, you know, as we kind of bring this to closure, people have to understand, bro, in this thing that we call life, you have to evolve. And if you don't evolve, then you're going to stay stuck in a place. Oftentimes, a lot of people just look at me and they say, Cam, when are you coming back to the, the league? Whether I go back or not, whether I get an opportunity or not, I still have to be Chosen's father, Shakir's dad, mm. Jaden's dad, mm. Sovereign Dior's father, Caesar. Ch like, it's all that. And they don't give a damn. And that fatherhood, you remember, I think it was after the year of 2015. Like, so 2015, we was the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. That, I mean, remarkable. I mean, that year, I mean, we couldn't do nothing wrong. Nothing. I walk around, and I'm the last dude on the, like, in my, I'm the last dude on the roster. Right. You know what I'm saying? Red carpet? You know yeah. what I'm saying? We, we rolling through on hoverboards through Bro. the city. Um, you know Man, what I'm saying? Man, we was like, this is, but, but take them back. 2015, the, the digital tech thing was the hoverboard. Come on, man. Bro, we had like, it was Thursday night. Cause we did, we went from there and then we would watch Thursday night football. But this this goes to show you like what a good team does. It's the chemistry, it's the camaraderie. And I would always tell anybody, if you go pound for pound for that roster versus any other good team, we were not the best talented. We, or let me say it like this. We weren't, we was not the best talent. But we was the best team. Yeah. Guys were selfless. Like I may have had 115 yards, but I may have have had the 94 rushing yards, which, you know, it still goes into yeah. you know, yards game. The defense pitched the shutout. Luke, mm -hmm. Jano, uh, we had Jared Allen, mm -hmm. we had Peanut Tillman. Mm -hmm. Now, those are older veterans. Cortland Finnegan. Yeah. And when you have a situation where, bro, everybody, we was like 40 deep driving down the street or rolling down the street it's on sink. hoverboards. It's like sink. going into yeah. the Bank of America building, going into the, this building, that building, stopping traffic. And it was just all in good fun. You know what I'm saying? Because one thing about assembling a team, it doesn't matter if it's in business. It doesn't matter if it's a church. It doesn't matter if it's an office. It doesn't matter in anything that you do. You have to have harmony. Yeah. Right. If if I really want to be Lou Young and I'm his assistant, that's a cancer. That it may not show it in 2023, yeah, but you're yeah. gonna see it yeah, sooner yeah, or later yeah, yeah. and it's gonna be dysfunctional. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. So even with that, bro, you know, how have you grown? I know you got some nonprofits. Uh yeah, yeah. you know, what do you do with those? So what uh well, how I've grown, I'll say before I even get into that, my daughter. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? She, that was 20, so after 2015, 2016, I actually had got cut. You remember, I had got cut. Right. And, that, and then they brought me back. Uh, so, like I said, 2015 was a wild year. Mm -hmm. Everything could do, and then I was, I was out there moving, shaking and moving. You know what I mean? I don't have to tell you what I did, but she came in 2016. So... I was out there. You came too. I was in there. I was like Floyd in that thing. You feel me? So uh, it was a bl beautiful blessing. But 2016, it was like reality hit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and now, you know, see, like with the fatherhood and balancing ball and everything, you was already doing that. So I was looking at y'all as examples, mm -hmm. even from afar. You know what I mean? So y'all taught me a lot with that. And just her growth and her being is like what's elevated me like mentally you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying it's, it's bigger than me so with my nonprofit, you know what i'm saying i i, I look at the impact i can have on the youth mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like uh it's called hope finders and then my uh for my younger brother cody young foundation so a lot of people don't know he was murdered uh 2016 mm -hmm. so my daughter was born 26 that 2016 was a crazy year for me and then he he you know he was murdered in Baltimore, 
uh, in July, and that that shook me up. You know what I'm saying? And it, and it, and it you know knocked me off. And then, it, but at the same time, it gave me this strength. You know what I'm saying? He was he was like uh, like me. Like a lot of people know me. Like yeah, I I like to have a good time with personality, whatever. But sometimes I'm kind of laid back. Right. You know, my brother, he walk in the room, you know who he is. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's almost like I, his spirit just came through me. Mm. So now I walk in rooms, I'm, I'm, hey, I ain't even waiting. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But that's him. I know that's him. You know what I'm saying? My, one of my barbers who I bar like growing up, he cut us. He said, man, it's crazy. It's like Cody is in Lou. He told my dad that. And that's real. So the, the Hope Finders and the Cody Young Foundation, it's like, me giving back to youth, it's the, the at risk youth, and you know, and poverty and whatever. It, and it don't you don't have to be in poverty, you know what I'm saying, or or low income house. It's, it's we we want everybody, but we want to attack them young, to get them an example and show them that, you know what I'm saying. I, I I grew up with guys who had two parent households that's in jail. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It don't matter where you come from. You ain't, like they had all the resources, but they like them in jail did. You know what I mean? It's about seeing the example and staying away from the distractions. And I, I'm grateful that my dad put me around a lot of guys of different walks of life. Right. You know what I mean? He had me play on the hood teams. The hood teams, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like the, the, the team mom who ready to fight. Right. You see what I'm right. saying? Or, or With the BBL. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can smell the fried catfish from the, from the car. In a weave. You know what I mean? Like that's the type of, the, 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 the gym hot as hell one one big ass fan in the corner, steel cut. <laughs> <sighs> you know, you get over there like this when you get a break. You know what I mean? See what I'm saying? So I'm grateful for that because it told me how to move and walk and it showed me that I wanted to be an impact with, with guys or uh, uh, young men, young women. You know what I mean? Because like I said, I'm 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 a father of a of a young daughter. You know what I mean? So that in itself is just grooming her. You know, letting her know that she's beautiful. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Talking to her, giving her confidence, letting her know that, you know what I'm saying? Daddy always going to be here. You know what I'm saying? You, yeah, and I, I, I credit my father because he always was like, I don't care if you make a mistake. You know what I mean? Just tell me the truth right. and I'm going to help you through it. So that's all it is. You know, we're going to make mistakes. And that's what I want to tell you. know, we make mistakes or whatever. But we, if you come correct with the truth, we can help it out. Yeah. We, we, we can figure that thing out. You know what I'm saying? I could dig it, man. Lou Young, appreciate you. And as we wrap things up here at Funky Friday, we're going to do it in unison. We're going to start with this camera in unison. Then we're going to go to this camera in unison. And then we're going to finish with this camera. You so ready? So I go here? We're going to go together. OK. One finger, one pinky, one thumb, uh -huh. one love. One love. You did. Gang, gang, gang. Yes, look. See what happened? I knew you wanted that, uh, <laughs> that, that, that Parmesan. <laughs> what, what was, uh, what was y'all doing on the hoverboards? Like, kind of we riding through the city. Bro, that was our team. Literally. Bonding. We was yeah. riding through the city. So how did that start and what happened? He just, he pulled up with, 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 uh, he came in the locker room one day with this, you know, this, he's already 7'2". So the hoverboard, he walking in there, he about seven six, running through there in the hoverboard. So I remember me and my boy uh, Dean Juice Bro, Dean Marlo. yeah, Juice Brother. We <laughs> looked at each other, we like, all right, You're right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we got one the next day. So we riding the hoverboards from the, uh, our apartment to the facility. We stayed literally right across from the right. facility. So and I remember you pulled up. So you started seeing everybody had them now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You pulled up. To the the problem, you, you told us, yeah, come on, man, move, move. we Everybody, come down. Bring your, make sure you charge. That, <laughs> that <laughs> the dee, 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 oh. you're <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, man, yeah. That was, yeah, it was big. Man, it started really like four of us. It turned into like fourteen, and then all of a sudden, it was just like 40, 50 strong. It's like we were marching, yeah, in unison, but. Yeah. Huh? And the, what happened in the city? Like, did people stop y'all? Like, y'all stopping traffic? Yeah, they honking. I mean, they Bro, see him. That year was so impactful for the city of Charlotte. It was really the perfect underdog story because nobody really outside of the 2003, I believe, when they went to the Super Bowl, 
like Charlotte or the Carolina Panthers was just really like off the grid. That year, we winning, winning. Like we were undefeated. Yeah. There's not a lot of teams in in NFL history that could say that at one point through 12 weeks, really we was 14 and 0. Really? Um, the last, we we lost the last game of the season. There was one. It was the second to last. Second game. was second. I will always remember that because that week of preparation, we did not practice. We did not have an indoor facility. We was practicing at the damn convention center. That's what I'm saying. Oh, then, we was. And then my son was born. So the day it yeah. dried up, I get a call. Boom, Auntie uh, uh, Shawty going into labor. I was like, oh man, I can't even practice. So we did not, pr I did not have my time, it was all, it was just a whole bunch of just stuff, but we still played and still damn near won. Uh, Polio yeah. wouldn't have went up top. <laughs> but it was just one of them times where it's like, bro, it's my time. I had that, I had that feeling two times in my life, like where I could not do no wrong. It was, was that? 2010 when I was at Auburn. Yeah, Auburn, yeah. And then 2015. But just be a witness. Like you gotta think, I'm I'm like, I'm witnessing like hi history. And this this dude was like, bro, I had I had the best seat in the house. Yeah. You gotta think about it, cause like I'm I'm going to, and I'm right here. Right. And I'm like, this God. Yeah. Like everything. Yeah, like I'm I'm woo! You feel me? Yeah. And then and then like I think it was like uh it might have been early in the season. You, you flipped over this uh, from Houston, yeah, and got up. It was just like it brought, he, like even how he was falling and getting hit was just. People don't even get hit like that. He was just swagging with that. He was just bow, ooh, 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 finger roll. I'm in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, real talk, bro. I was, I was like, bro. I was to be your teammate. Yeah. I tell people all the time, bro. Yeah, he. Of course. I mean, everybody know the talent. Yeah. They know figure and all that but you probably one of the best teammates no. like uh, uh ever for for me you know what i'm saying just as a person humility like bro you and then the play bro 26 was it 2015 2016? 2015 2015 yeah uh and then when we was down at the Super Bowl, it was a that was a party. Bro, <laughs> we couldn't party. walk man like bro i remember that game i was saying to myself like bro i'm tired in the game, I'm like, bro, I'm tired. But we had a week there. We didn't have curfew. We didn't have none of that. And I was just drained from the whole year. You know, one offensive player of the year, one MVP. And I'm just like mentally drained, physically drained. And I was thinking to myself, bro, this is just like a party. It was like, damn, like it was the party. It was like the, the, the jet lag or the lag the day after. But just that, bro, like my whole thing about being a human being, bro, is just like, bro, do good to people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, like, even, bro. Okay, so even in that, like, height, right? Of, your, of in that moment, like, you, you got to know, like, yeah, I'm, I'm him. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, how did you even, like, how did you even deal with that day to day? Like, you know, I'm seeing, well, we, I'm seeing you day to day, yeah. but like, when you go home, like, like, was there ever a pressure or was you just like just vibing? Man. And I'm gonna say some real bro. That person, it, it was like a perfect example of like I was compartmentalizing a lot of stuff. I was not a good boyfriend. I was not a good human to really be focused on my, like I was focused, nothing came before football. Mm. But the amount of women, the amount of energies that I was taking on that year, it bro, I couldn't miss. You know what I'm saying? I could not <laughs> miss, like well, bro. I but Steph Curry. Like no, talk. like no kizzy bro. I'm I, was, literally, I was like Draymond out there. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm, I'm literally like everywhere I go, it's a party. Every, like I could go to, McDonald's, bro. I could go to IHOP, Waffle House. Bro, we was at, bro, we, bro, like, this is why I'll never go to another future concert because I ain't about to sit in no general admission. <laughs> we was on stage. Yeah. At the March Madness. This was, this was March Madness. This was flip flop future. 
Like, like what? This was this was flip flop future. We was on stage and and, and future, bro. That the <sighs> NFC Championship, bro. It's not a lot of folks that really did it. You know what I'm saying? And whether I play again, who gives? Them? I know, I, but ain't too many did what I did. Bro, I had Jeezy and Future. You know what I'm saying? On the sideline, just like, bro, like, we want to f- with you. And it wasn't an Atlanta Falcons game. This wasn't uh-huh. a Miami. This wasn't a New York game. This wasn't Texas, America's this team. This is Charlotte. This is Charlotte, North Carolina. Like, the pulse that was in those stadiums, bro, it felt like college. Mm-hmm. Every week. Mm-hmm. Every week, bro, we beating good teams and we busting they Damn ass. good. Like, we, bro, we beat, we beat uh, Green Bay, all right? And I remember they had like a banner up and I snatched that down. I'm like, bro, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? Like, it was just a pride thing. And, you know, I wanted the aura and the responsibility of a quarterback permeates through the locker room. You know what I'm saying? If the quarterback is rowdy, the team is rowdy. If the quarterback's confident, the team is confident. If the quarterback is 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 not getting it done, typically the team ain't getting it done. So it was a lot that was going on, and the way I compartmentalized it was I just sectioned it off. I was just like, this is football cam. This is out of the, the facility cam. This is family man cam. And it just came to a halt, like, and... It's like, damn, bro, I need, I need some time. And even from there, I had went straight to L.A. to shoot the Nickelodeon show. So it was like I was just going, 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 yeah. going. And I don't think I took time during that year to just breathe. Yeah. You feel me? Because it was nowhere that I could hide. At all. Like everybody, everybody wants to start them. Everybody wants like, oh, bro, you know, that's, you know I want to be the guy. I want to be the Right? But the reality of it is like, bro, you may not be fit for that because it's a lot of pressure. You know, you see, a, you send a DM to a chick, they screenshotting them hoes. This was before you knew they were screenshot. They, this was way before Vanish right Mode. Then. You know what I'm saying? Post. Like, bro, this was media takeout, ball alert, uh, 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 all that, all that. You know what I'm saying? Just, like, I, and I see, and I see, I see where I'm going with this, where everything in my career, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I see those sites is posting my stuff and this and the third. People recognize, so I'm like, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? I, then I be, I, and, I, and that's what I'm saying, I credit football. I'm like, you know, I be thinking like, damn, I, I can't only imagine mm-hmm. what, like, what was Cam dealing with yeah. mentally like, just on a day-to-day. Bro, it's, it's still, like, crit, like I don't, I don't toot my horn, bro, but when you talk about just being what I've done, what I'm doing now, it's like, bro, I, I have to be structured, bro. I'm up at five. I'm working out. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing that football taught me that a lot of guys, they don't keep doing. I need structure. If I'm not doing this, I'm, 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 I'm helping out with the logistics company, you know, the cart away. If I'm not doing that, then I'm, you know, trying to, you know, uh, I'm a CEO of, of C1N, you know, the 707. And then it's, it's, it's iconic saga. It's like, bro, it's, it's strenuous. So I put myself on a curfew similar to the, the season. Bro, I'm in the house, especially when I got my kids. Bro, I take my kids to school every single day. Yeah, I got yeah, a yeah. son that think I'm Superman. I don't give a f- if you think I'm Superman. I love the fact that you think I'm Superman. But if my sons yeah. and my daughters don't think of me as Superman, I failed. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I look at it through the lens like, nah, so when you talk about Cam, are you coming back to the, like, bro, if it's not going to benefit them, I'm not doing that shit. They don't know how much of a hands-on father I am. It's like, bro, I live for, like, family. Man, I told my girl the other day, I'm like, babe, I appreciate you for making my house feel like a home. Mm, Yeah. Like, man, I hear the kids upstairs, they jumping around, they hitting each other, and it's, hey, 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 hey. (laughs) <laughs> Sit it down. Are you yelling? You, you know, know what I mean? mean? Hey, you know, but it's it's that yeah. it's that love yeah. that I came from. But I was broke as like we had to splash, like we would go from splash to splash for milk. It's like, okay, no, 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 bro, that's too much. Bro, now nah, give me some more, bro. All right, bro. All yeah. right, bro. You know what I mean? I yeah. grew up in that type of environment. Like my kids, now it's my job to 
to make sure that they value the little things in life because it's not like this. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, all in all, bro, it's throughout that time, throughout my life, bro, I've seen so many different sides of Cam. And one thing that I never will compromise is just being good to people. Yeah. I don't give a what people think about me. I've, I've become bulletproof to that. But I just was like, bro, I love people, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, Damn. Hey, yeah. Yeah, real. Uh, <laughs> all right. Damn, I done seen five, like five different times. You know what I mean?